crooked Joe Biden is smelling a big defeat in November. So he has no choice but to bribe baby bribe. The president is taking another shot at his failed student loan cancellation scheme to juice his fl flailing numbers with young voters. It's a group that he won by 25 points just four years ago. But now the latest poll shows the big guy is losing to Donald Trump by two points. Biden is desperate to win them back. So that explains why he's trying to find another loophole in the law and cancel student debt for 30 million borrowers. AOC is cheering Joe on and is giving the plan her socialist stamp of approval. This is huge. This is people getting the student loan forgiveness, student, their student loans canceled. It means that, you know, it's hope to buy a house or have a kid or travel abroad or maybe even go back to school and and you know pursue a career that maybe they otherwise wouldn't have. I mean I one of the reasons that's not me now is because I didn't feel like I'd be able to afford medical school. And um, and so hopefully someone else who's at an ICEF competition somewhere will be able to do that because of this. As usual, President Biden is trying to cast Republicans as the bad guy. Tens of millions of people's debt was literally about to get canceled. But then some of my Republican friends and elected officials and special interests sued us, and the Supreme Court blocked us. But that didn't, well, that didn't stop us. And the liberal media is more than happy to help Biden dump on the GOP. In multiple states, Republicans are suing to make sure that Americans have to pay more in student loans, to make sure that you have to pay more interest to banks on your student loans. That is what they are offering America in this election year. Isn't that what America most needs for banks to make more money off people who took out loans to go to college? Isn't that really, you know, morally, isn't that a real justice issue for America? <laughs> uh, more interest to the banks. I never realized that that was a student debt issue. You know, by, um, I'll go to you, Dana. The, the truth is that the Supreme Court is basically saying that this is against the law, that the president doesn't have that power, and now she's, uh, Maddow is making it about something other yeah. than the law. I mean, you, there is a room to talk about the interest rate issue, and that would be great, but that's not what President Biden is talking about. He's going after the taxpayer to help pay for people who are in positions that they had a contract, and also they um, have been basically forgiven for years. And it's going to cost everybody else the money. We've talked about the fairness issue there for all the people that did it right. A couple of things here. You know, the main driver right now of the cost of college is tenured professor salaries. Nobody's going after them. At University of Pennsylvania right now, an annual cost of attendance is now well above the median household income for one year, okay. regardless of the major. I mean, you could major in art artificial intelligence or probably set yourself up for a really good career, or you could major in art history, and, and that's great. I love art history as well, but then you're going to complain about your student loan later on. It reminds me of his immigration policies. His, it, the student loan proposal that he's doing now solves none of the root causes and teaches everyone the wrong lessons. And what, he, what he's saying to the Supreme Court is that I will just defy you in order to get votes until November, and then if it doesn't work out, no problem. Right. There was the one statute that the, the Supreme Court said, this is a major issue, and under this statute, you cannot do this. Congress has to get involved. So they said, okay, well, we'll do it under another statute. I think the result from the Supreme Court would be the same. My last thought was something that I came up with today as I was walking, but it's been percolating for a while. I think President Trump would benefit from announcing his VP pick sooner than later. And I hadn't actually really been in that position before, but I think that there are so many issues that are going on right now with whack-a-mole and him about to be in a courtroom every day starting Monday. If you think about having somebody out there who is a good communicator who can deal with all of these issues now, I mean, I think that the... We, we know who the two nominees are going to be. It's the longest general election in history. I think he, he would benefit from figuring out who that person would be, announcing it, and letting them get out in the country 
and do some of this batting practice. Okay. All right. Well, Jesse, aside from that, which certainly you can comment on, I mean, canceling student loan debt and basically canceling a legally enforceable contract that someone of sound mind entered into uh, should occur in order to give hope so that students can travel abroad. Is that the new Democrat platform? Yes. Uh, go to Europe for six months and get so drunk you don't remember it. <sighs> I had so much fun. If only I could remember <laughs> Europe. <laughs> I think we're not uh, talking about the lead here, is that AOC thought she was smart enough to get into medical school. Yeah, that was pretty uh, I mean, I thought maybe law school, but then remember, she doesn't even know what racketeering is. I guess she would have been a great doctor. Dana, I actually like that idea. Uh, she could have basically someone out there selling your agenda while you're tied up in court. Yeah. It's a good idea. Thank you. Um, Janine will talk to the president about that. <laughs> I figured out the reason why we're in this situation. It's all the baby boomers' fault. So in the late 1960s, it was the biggest generation ever. And the only way you could get ahead was to go to college. You wanted to be a white-collar worker. You didn't want to have to have a job in a factory. So when all of the baby boomers had families, all the millennial generation, they were made to go to college, whether they wanted to or not. I mean, little Johnny, let's be honest, Probably is not the greatest academic student, um, but he was forced to go to college. And even if the parents, the boomers, couldn't afford to send him to college, he was forced to take out loans to go to college so he could be a liberal arts major and get a white collar job. But then what happened? We have this overabundance of white collar workers, and all we need are blue collar workers. We are reindustrializing this country. And we're doing chips manufacturing, all this construction. And there's just not enough blue-collar jobs out there. So now you have a bunch of people in debt complaining that they can't find work. And so instead of Joe Biden encouraging people, maybe don't take $500,000 in loans out to get a useless degree when we need something for maybe the CHIPS Act or the Inflation Reduction Act, he's still just bribing them. That's where we are right now. Again... It's the fault of the boomers. Okay. All right, Jessica, let's talk about the fact that the Democrat Party was always a party of the working man. And now we see the Democrat Party, you know, they're giving all of these benefits so that you can buy an EV car, and they're giving benefits so that you can get solar panels, tax credits if you put solar panels in your house, and now benefits for those who have a college education, canceling their debt. You know, what about vet benefits to, you know, seniors who can't make any more money, or veterans, or the working class? Well, there are a lot of benefits to seniors. If you look at what's gone on as part of the Inflation Reduction Act, lowering the price of prescription drugs, especially for Medicare Part D, is a huge win for seniors. Insulin going down to $35 a month. Uh, that's something that has, what, like a 99% approval rating. Um, in terms of getting jobs in all of these green industries, there are a huge number of apprenticeship programs under the Biden-Harris administration. Just because you get a job and it's a green job, you might not like it as much, but it's still paying you and it's training you How for the future. How many new green jobs are there? I have to get the exact number, but there's a press release about it, and there are a lot of... Well, there are. And it's also... Part of it is about... Is as it Jesse for already said, charging stations? It's not for the charging stations. I've taken the L on the charging station already. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, though, about the student loan forgiveness program, and I was skeptical of this at first. I said, you certainly can't go around erasing hundreds of thousands of dollars of student debt. But 62% of Americans think that at least some portion of student debt should be forgiven. And there are, they've targeted five kinds of borrowers. And I think you guys would be hard-pressed to say these people haven't gotten it rough. And some of it is the interest rate problem. Certainly, private institutions are gouging kids. I love to see how many medical schools are now being fully funded, that billionaires are stepping in and just saying mm -hmm. no one should come out of this with debt. But these borrowers, people who owe more now than when they borrowed, who've owed for over 20-plus years, people who have just $10,000 in debt and then they can have their life back, folks who enrolled in, quote, low-value academic programs, so they used to have a financial aid program, and now they don't. These are people who you could really make the argument are victims of the system versus what you would say it was, that it's kids who are out there earning a quarter of a million dollars. This is for low- and middle-income people. And for couples to make a quarter of a million. Go ahead, Greg. Well, first of all, AOC's uh, district is a nightmare. 
I mean, Venezuelans walk in and they leave <laughs> instead of helping her, her constituents, you know, crime victims, uh, seniors who no longer have pharmacies to go to because they closed, people who need jobs but can't find them because somehow Amazon never came here. I wonder why that happened. Instead, she decides to bail out, you know, the uh, non-binary, pink-haired gender studies major from Wellesley because, you know... Don't seven sisters back. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. And, and just that... that you, that travel abroad thing, I didn't realize that the whole point of a government mm -hmm. and the whole point of paying my taxes is so that somebody can travel abroad. <laughs> Do you think the truck driver making his auto payments is asking for a handout, you know, so he can go backpacking through Europe, you know, traipsing from one hostel to another until he passes out in the red light district of Amsterdam? Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pass out. Yeah, so I didn't travel abroad when I was young, and it wasn't until I was older, and that was for a medical procedure. Ooh. I, <laughs> this could be solved fairly, which you think the Democrats would embrace because it's all about fairness. So why not split the load, right, between schools, banks, and borrower? Because it's not really about fairness, it's about votes. They would prefer to bilk the taxpayers because the taxpayers are powerless, unlike the academia and unlike the banks who have actual power and can come after you. And finally, they're always conflating uh, intentionality with functionality. So as long as it's compassion, it's good. But if you look in all the areas that Dems apply compassion, which is crime, immigration, women's sports, here with the, the loans, it's bad. It's bad because they never factor in how their compassion impugns other people, whether it the loans, it's money being stolen from other people, whether it's female athletes, whether it's hardworking Americans who have to compete for jobs. All of this, all of this stuff is viewed through the lens of compassion. When they say these people need help paying their bills, mm -hmm. that's no different than these migrants need a sanctuary or this trans woman needs to be her best self. They're all the same, but they but in this compassion, in this in this weird compassion filter, it ignores the cost that it impugns on everyone else. In this case, it's theft. You can't call it forgiveness. You can't call it loan cancellation. They're stealing money. And if you are a hardworking American, how you can support this guy who's taking money right out of your right out of your pocket, then you deserve him. OK. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.